everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and we are coming back to Root from Leader Games, trying out the Clockwork 2 expansion. This has Clockwork Otomo rules for the four newest factions, the uh, Crows and the Moles, and also the, what are they, Otters and uh, Lizards from previous expansions. And a quick disclaimer that Leader Games did send me the new expansion, although everything else I have for Root, uh, all of the other content, I bought myself. And I polled Patreon supporters on which faction I should control. I ended up with the Corvid Conspiracy, which are the Trap Laying Crows. And then I was going to use the other three factions in the new expansion as the uh, Automa, but that actually didn't have enough reach. The game has this concept called Reach that means like it's a good map with a lot of factions that'll actually cover it well. So I subbed out the Lizards who were not playing very well, were not winning uh, in the games I tried out, for the Electric Irie from the original Automa expansion. So I have two of the four Atoma from Clockwork 2 and one from Clockwork 1, and I'm playing the Corvids. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month. You can also check out our separate streaming channel, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. All right, so to give you a quick overview of the map first, it's tough to get it all in frame, but I'm doing my best. Uh, the birds are starting in the upper right-hand corner. The moles are starting in the bottom left-hand corner, although they can tunnel pretty much to anywhere. The river folks start on the river, obviously, and then I just have uh, my little purple crows there in sort of a diagonal going the other way, trying to avoid the biggest concentration of troops so far. So let's jump into our first group and see how they do. So the Electric Irie, if you've seen my previous root playthroughs, I think you've already seen them before. Uh, just like the Irie in the regular game, they're going to build up cards underneath these different columns, and it's going to give them more and more actions until they eventually can't build a roost, which will put them into turmoil and get rid of all the cards and make them lose victory points. They're going to expand explosively, but we want to hopefully uh, stop them eventually. So the first thing to do on their turn is reveal an order card. In this case, it's a rabbit card, and it does not have an item. Those are the two main things the Atoma cares about. Because the next step is to craft the order card for one victory point if it has an item. It does not, so they can't do that. But one of the key mechanics with the River Folk is that other factions can take their cards to do things with them. And the only thing the Atoma generally cares about with that is taking craftable items. I've got this bake sale here with a coin on it. The other thing the Atoma will use them for, I'm doing the basic services, they also have like an advanced services if you want to make it more complicated, is they'll use the River Folk's warriors as mercenaries sometimes. And the Atoma pays for these services, and we do as well, by giving the River Folk warriors, and it's based on the Atoma faction's current victory points. So everybody's at zero, so right now if the Irie wants to buy that card to craft the coin, they have to give two warriors to the River Folk. So they will do so. And they steal this card and craft the coin immediately. That technically comes to their crafted items area, but since there is no Vagabond player in the game who could actually interact with those items, it's basically done. Every time an item is crafted, one victory point is gained. By the way, I'm sorry that the colors are so similar. So the, I don't know, middle blue shade is the Irie, the purple is me, the crows, the corvids, and the lighter blue is the river folk. Uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Now, by the way, when the Atoma buys a card from the River Folk, it replaces their uh, previous cards. So here they're still doing a rabbit. It ended up being the same suit, but it could have been different. And that rabbit card gets added to their decree, slotted underneath the correct column. Now we resolve the decree. We're going to recruit and then move and then battle. And for each of those, we're going to go from left to right. So first they'll recruit with any fox cards, mouse cards, bunny cards, and uh, bird cards. So clearly just those two. Then they'll move in the same way. Then they'll battle. So recruiting, they see if they have a roost in the matching suit. So they're going to see if they have a roost, one of these little uh, square buildings, in a rabbit clearing. And if they do, they'll recruit as many warriors as the number of cards there, one in this case. But their only roost at the moment is in a mouse clearing, so they cannot recruit with that first column. But bird cards are wild, and they have two of those, so they are going to recruit two warriors with that. Right here, bringing up their warriors on the map to eight in that one clearing. Next, they're going to move again, first trying to do rabbit and then bird. And they have to move from a matching clearing. So they would have to be leaving a rabbit clearing, which is clearly impossible, or any clearing. And they're going from the matching place with the most warriors to an adjacent place without a roost because they want to try to build one. So they can't move with the rabbit effect because they don't have any uh, warriors in a rabbit clearing, but they can with the bird one. And they leave behind enough warriors to rule the place, which would actually be zero here because nobody else is there. Or the number of cards in the column, which is two, whichever is higher. So they're going to leave two warriors behind. And all three adjacent clearings have no roost, so all of them are eligible. Their next preference is the one with the fewest warriors. They want to have an easy time conquering it. So they will march six of their eight warriors down here to clearing number six. 
And then finally, they try to battle in a matching clearing, but they don't have anyone they can battle against. So their second part of Daylight is going to be to build a roost in the clearing they control with no roost. There's only one option there. And then they're going to score the current victory point under the rightmost roost that they've placed, which is one. So they build in the only free building spot there. And they go up to a second victory point. That's it for the first I return. Okay, next is me, the Corvid Conspiracy. I place down plot tokens, which are these eight tokens here. And I have to spend my warriors to place them in clearings with my warriors. And then I have to try to keep them safe until my next turn, in which case I get to flip them and earn victory points for them. That's kind of like the basic idea of how I work. So the first step of my turn is I can craft using any plots I have on the board. I do have two craftable items in my hand, a mouse in a sack and a crossbow, one needing a fox clearing, one needing a mouse clearing. But I currently have no plots on the board, so I have to skip that. Next, I could flip plots tokens on the board. Clearly, I can't do that yet. And then I can recruit. Once per turn, I can spend any card to place one warrior in each matching clearing. So if I, for example, discarded my mouse in a sack, I could place one crow in each mouse clearing. Uh, in the case of a bird, I pick one clearing type. And yeah, saboteurs let me discard an enemy's crafted card. The Automa aren't going to craft anything anyway, so I'll get rid of that one. And let's see. Um, I want to be somewhere with not too many opponents. I think mouse might be my best bet. So since that was a bird, I'll go ahead and put one warrior in each mouse clearing. That even lets me threaten the uh, original roost for the Irie up there. It's always fun to be annoying. All right, now I can take three actions. The trick one is basically useless. So against uh, human players, you actually put these... I mean, I'm going to put them face down either way. But the humans don't know which plot it is, so they can, like, guess which plot it is. The Atoma never does that, and I can use the trick action to swap them around and be tricky. All of that uh, kind of bluffing is gone when you're just playing solo. So I really only care about the move action to move my Crow Warriors. I can move from and to anywhere. I don't care about control. Usually uh, people need to have the most pieces in a clearing to be able to, like, move away from there. I can battle with an action, or I can plot. I have to take away one of my warriors, and then if I want to plot more times, I have to take away two warriors for the second plot, three warriors for the third plot, so it gets more and more expensive. So this time I'm going to try to put down at least one and protect it. So let's see. I think first I'll move uh, March. That's one of my three actions. For my second action, I will remove a warrior here. To put down a plot, I'm going to put down this extortion one. Uh, it lets me draw extra cards every turn once I flip it, so it's a good one to have. And that's also any fox clearing, so theoretically I might be able to build my crossbow next turn if it's still there. And then for my third action to set up another plot later, I think my two warriors here might kill the river folk. Ah, sure, let's go for it. If you don't know root combat, you roll two dice. The attacker gets the higher value, the defender gets the lower value. Perfect roll. So I do uh, up to two damage, which is capped by my number of warriors, and they do zero damage back, so I just defeat this guy, and now I own the clearing entirely. All right, now going into evening, I have an option. I can exert and take a fourth action, but if I do, I don't draw any cards, or I can draw one card plus one per extortion showing. So basically, I can uh, draw one card or take a fourth action this turn. You know, I'm kind of thinking I could remove both warriors here to place another plot, although there's a high likelihood that the Irie would just come in and kill it. But if I made it a raid, when it gets killed, I actually get a free uh, warrior in every adjacent clearing, so I'd kind of trade two warriors for three, but I'd give the Irie a victory point. Nah, for now, let's draw a card, which is Coffin Makers. I'm not going to worry about that. I don't have any uh, plots in rabbit clearings yet. All right, that was it for my uh, first turn. Now let's get to the drill bit duchy, the moles. They have this special thing called the burrow. They put soldiers on there, and then those soldiers can tunnel to basically anywhere on the map. And they also sway these ministers to give them access to different powers. They start with two of them swayed. See, I like the Irie. They're a very militaristic faction, although they kind of pop up everywhere instead of being like the Irie where they just consistently expand outwards. So like the Irie, I'm revealing the top card. It is a bunny, and they can't craft a card on it, and there's nothing for them to buy from the river folk, so they're just not going to craft. Okay, then it says recruits two warriors plus one per mole icon showing, which would be on the citadel, so if they built citadels, they would recruit more. Onto the burrow. So they built up two warriors on the burrow. They generally need uh, four or more to actually attack from the burrow, so they're not going to do anything yet. And that goes right into here. Dig. If the burrow has four or more warriors, they would place a tunnel and attack. They're not going to. Okay, then they battle on each ordered clearing, which was rabbit clearings. Now, the only rabbit clearing they can do that in is right here. Uh, and they have defeated the river folk and taken no casualties themselves. Every other rabbit clearing just has river folk, or in the bottom right, I have one. 
which is significant because they could pay the river folk to be mercenaries and attack for them, which they would have done if there were other people to be attacked there. And by the way, speaking of attacking, they have swayed the captain, which gives them plus one hit when they attack in a place with a tunnel, which they did a moment ago, but they didn't need the plus one hit. All right, so they battled. Now they build. They check how many people they have in their supply. If they have nine or more, which they do, they're going to build a citadel. Otherwise, they build a market. And they build in the place with the most warriors. In this case, they have two warriors everywhere, so we go to priority. The lower the number, the higher the priority. Now there's a nine up here, so the four in the corner, it makes sense, is where they're going to build. Then they take all the actions of their ministers. So they go from top to bottom. The captainess gives them an ongoing ability, but the brigadier, it says, take the dig action if the burrow has three or more warriors on it. So it would be an extra dig movement, but they only have two, so that doesn't apply yet. Then going into evening, they rally, and each ordered clearing with no buildings and two or fewer warriors, all the warriors move to an adjacent clearing with a building, or they just jump to the burrow. So in this case, uh, they're just going to abandon all of their territory, that's very interesting, and come back to their place with the building here. But then the second part of their rally is everyone in excess of four goes to the burrow. So basically they're just building up to do a huge attack next turn. All right, then they score one victory point per market on the map. They have none. And then they sway a new crown. And they do the topmost one of the suit they have, which was Bunny. So they're going to get a Marshal, which will give them a free new warrior recruit every turn. And that's it. So they've kind of given up territory, but they have built their first citadel, which is going to help with their recruitment. And they're ready to tunnel into some place and break some heads next turn. Okay, fine. Let me get to the River Folk. First, they stock their market. They want to always have five cards. The market is this little hand of cards here. So they add a card there to bring it to five. And then they look at the new cards they just drew, and if any of them are craftable, they craft the leftmost one. In this case, they did get a hammer on the one card they drew. Uh, the Otoma always just gets one victory point from crafting. They don't uh, care about the actual value indicated. So they've crafted a hammer for one victory point. Okay, next, their order becomes the rightmost card, which is a mouse at the moment. So first, they try to place a trade post matching the suit, so the leftmost mouse trade post. As they build more of these, they start getting victory points, but the first one doesn't give them any. And they're also going to place a warrior to guard it. And their first tiebreaker for where they go out of the mouse clearings available is the one belonging to the player that has the most pieces in their payments box. Uh, so far, only the IRE has paid them. So they're going to place their warrior and trading post up here. Next, they recruit one warrior in each ordered clearing. There's a lot like uh, what I did as the Corvids, the Crows. So they're just going to put a warrior in every mouse clearing. If it was a bird card, they would put one in every river clearing. So here we go, river folk everywhere including right back where I got rid of them. Okay, next they organize and they check for protectionism. Basically, they're seeing if they have no warriors in their payment box and or no warriors in their supply. And if either of those is true, they start doing all these actions, they start fighting a lot. If neither is true, as in this case, where they have warriors in both places, they tend to not do much for the rest of their turn. They aren't going to battle at all because the shield and the sword don't apply. That, again, is related to where they didn't have any troops. So let's go right to evening. Score one per warrior of the player with the most warriors in payment, then remove those warriors. So they're giving back the two Irie because they had the most in their payment box, and they're going to get two victory points. Which is significant because the Otomo will never buy anything, any of the services from the River Folk, if the River Folk have more victory points than that Otomo player does. So right now, nobody's going to be uh, going to the River Folk for help for a while. Okay, and then if we had the Shield of a Sword, we would do this racketeering. We don't. And so they just discard the leftmost card to make it more likely they won't do a mouse again, since they'll be adding more cards. And uh, that is it. They have pretty quick turns sometimes. So let's go to Irie number two. We're going to draw a card. Ooh, they got another bird. And they're building a bag for a victory point. That was a fantastic draw. Brings them up to three victory points, which means now they actually would consider paying the river folk for stuff. All right, they already crafted, and they already added the order. So now they're going to try to recruit at a rabbit roost. They don't have any. And they recruit three warriors. And when they have roosts to choose from, they go for the one that has the most enemy pieces and the fewest of their warriors. So either way, it's going to be right here that they get the three guys. Then they're going to move, and once again, they don't have anybody in rabbits, so they can't use that one, but they can move with their bird card. And they move from where they have the most warriors, which is going to be here. And they want to go to a place with no roosts, so that's 11 or 3. And they want the fewest enemy pieces, and then they're going to leave three warriors behind because of the three cards in that bird column. I know this actually means they get to do two battles because now they've got a rabbit clearing for their one rabbit card. So they're going to attack me there. And, <laughs> man, we're rolling a lot of zeros, so I don't do any damage. They just take out my one bird. But then they still have their three bird column, and they want to battle again. And whichever column has the most cards, in this case the bird one with three cards, gets plus one hit, so they'll have a bonus to attacking here. And they want to attack the player with the most pieces. They're going to ignore me, yay, and attack these guys. And again, they get a plus one hit automatically. So 
two hits is going to become three, but they take one hit in return. So this guy's gone, but one, two, and the third hit will destroy the trading post. Anytime a circular or square token gets removed, the player scores a point. So that puts the birds into a commanding lead. And there's a penalty when a trading post is destroyed. The river folk lose half of that faction's warriors from their payment box, but there are no birds there anyway, so they don't get anything right now. Now the birds need to build another roost. The only place they can is right here. So we have not slowed them down yet. And with three roosts on the board, they're getting two victory points. We better do something about that. Hopefully the moles will help out. We'll see. All right, now it is my turn. First, I can craft. And I'm going to craft a crossbow. I need one fox clearing with a plot, which happily I've got right here. So that's my first victory point. Yay. Take that, moles. Last place. How you feeling? Next, I can flip as many face down plots as I want. And each time I flip a plot, I get victory points equal to the number of plots on the board in general which does actually make this a choice. If I think this is still gonna be safe next turn, I might wanna leave this plot here, because then if I flip it next turn, I get two victory points instead of one. Although this is the extortion plot, which will let me get an extra card this turn, so hmm. Nah, I think I'm gonna let it ride and hope to try to get more victory points next turn. All right, next I can recruit. Um, hmm. I have more people in mouse clearings now, so I think it kind of makes sense to bulk that up. Yeah, I'm gonna do mouse clearings, even though I do lose the chance to build that sack. So that gets me here with the river folk again, and a pretty good presence in a couple of these places, which should also hopefully mess with the Eyrie expanding more. And speaking of the Eyrie, this would be annoying. Hello. Okay, now I get my three actions, or four if I exert. Now let's see, I'm pretty sure that the river folk won't attack me this next turn, because they shouldn't be out of warriors. But the Eyrie is clearly going to potentially be coming toward me. Although they prefer clearings with fewer people, so if I keep a decent presence, maybe they won't. Well, let's see, for my first action, let's go ahead and uh, attack here. Okay, nice side. Defeat them without taking any damage. For my second action, I'll go ahead and plot, and I think I'll do another extortion one, so eventually I'll get more cards. And for my third action, let's be a bit protective of my other plot and move that guy up there. So now I've got two warriors defending each of my plots. And I'm going to go ahead and draw another card instead of taking a fourth action. Okay. Um, I don't have anything in bunny clearing, so I can't craft that, but it'll get me some soldiers there, I guess. And next we go to the duchy. They're doing a bird action. And they can't craft anything. But they're going to recruit three warriors to the burrow. Holy crud. That's a lot because of the plus one bonus from their citadel that's placed. And now they're going to dig with four warriors. And when they draw a bird card, they're basically aggressive. When it's not a bird card, they're more defensive. Looking for a place with no tunnel, none of their buildings. And for bird, the most enemy buildings and tokens. Now, sadly for me, I should have realized my one priority is making me... A prime target for them. And because it's a bird, they can go anywhere they want. Oh, they're going to get plus one attack from the tunnels. So that's probably a dead plot, darn it. All right, now they're going to battle everywhere. And that's the only place they can. They get plus one hit. Come on, roll a zero or one. Uh, oh, <laughs> so they kill two things and I kill nothing. That does mean my plot is alive because the uh, tokens are always the last thing to go. That was lucky. Okay, now they're going to build where they have the most warriors. They have no space in the other clearing. And since they don't have that many warriors in their supply, they're going to get a market instead. Just to show, they would need nine or more warriors. They've only got seven in their supply, so that's going to be an extra victory point for them every turn. And now they do their ministers. The marshal says, place a warrior into a clearing that has the fewest warriors and a building. They have two clearings with buildings, each with four warriors, but this one has higher priority, so they'll go there. Then the brigadier says, take the dig action if the burrow has three or more warriors. Yes, it does. For this dig action, use the clearing tie condition for a bird. So they're going to go again to a place with none of their buildings, no tunnel, and the uh, most enemy buildings and tokens. Ooh, which this time means they are taking it to the Eyrie. I like that. Although they're just tunneling, not attacking, so they won't do anything yet. All right, now they rally. They look for places with two or fewer warriors. They don't have any. Every place they have on the map has four or more. But they do take away every warrior over four, which means this fifth guy here is going back to the burrow. All right, then they score one per market. Well, wow, it's really their first victory point. Okay, now they sway a minister. Since it was a bird, they just take the highest one available, which will be the four mole. So they count as having an extra mole icon. So with the citadel, they're going to be recruiting four moles to their tunnel next turn, or the burrow. And that was it. But it looks like they're set up for a pretty big turn next time. All right, then the river folk, they get two new cards. They go up to five, and they did get a craftable one, so they're going to craft a bag, the last bag to get a victory point. Brings them to four, which means their order will be a bird, the card that's left. Okay, now they're going to build a garrison. Now with bird, any of the three are eligible, and they're going to a clearing with pieces from the player with the most pieces in the payment box. 
which is themselves. So they're going to look at clearings where they already exist. And there are no other tiebreakers besides just regular priorities. So it is actually pretty easy. They're just going to go to the five, which is the lowest number they have. And then because it was a bird, they recruit one warrior on each river clearing, which is five of them. So they're still popping in there. And once again, they don't have protectionism. They do have one person here. They do have people there. So they're just going to score one victory point for their own guy and return him. And then discard the leftmost card, this fox one. And that gets them to five, so they're doing pretty well. And right now the birds, like I said, will do things a little bit faster. It's a fox card they can't craft. So I'm going to try to recruit one fox, one rabbit, three bird. That actually works out pretty well. They've got literally all those types of roosts. And for the three bird recruit, they're trying to fight against the moles over here. Okay, movement. There's only one fox card, so they're moving all these guys over here. Lovely. Oh, and God, the rabbit move is also moving them all over. This is not looking great for my plot. And then for the bird card, they're moved from here, but they still want to rule. And they need three warriors to rule because it's number of buildings plus warriors, one, two, three, four, and they win ties. So they're tied with the moles here. And they're going to space 10 with the fewest enemies. All right, the battle on a fox clearing is wasted because there aren't any where they can battle. Battle on a rabbit clearing happens here. 1-1, uh, one, one. and they didn't get their bonus because it did not have the most pieces, so there we go. And then for the bird battle, they actually prefer where there is no roost, so they can try to make sure they get one. Then they do lowest priority, which is unfortunately where I am, and they're attacking me because I have the most pieces. They get plus one because they have three bird cards. All this is bad, and yeah, this time they do destroy my plot. Should have gone for the raid one instead, so I killed one of them, and they blew this up, which means their march of victory points continues. They go up to seven. They build a new roost here since it has higher priority than that one. And they're getting three more victory points from roost. Jeez. Yeah, I forgot how explosive the Irie can be. All right, going to my sad turn. I can't craft anything. I'm going to flip my one plot. I got greedy, so there we go. Yay, two victory points. And then I'll discard this bunny card to recruit in all bunny clearings. And then I get to take my three actions. What do I want to do? For my first action, it's a bit wacky, but I think they're going to fight each other. So I will... Actually, you know what? I could. Yeah, actually, I'm going to move this guy here for one action. For my second action, I'm going to take one away. Plot with an extortion. Now, I'll do the raid, which will get me more warriors if they blow it up. And then for my third action, here's the wacky one. Again, I'm hoping they'll fight each other. So I'm going to take away two people, but again, I'm going to put a raid down, just kind of assuming they might kill me. But hey, if both of those survive and my other little extortion one survives, I'll get six victory points. That's cool. Okay, and I'm not going to exert because I want more cards. And I do get two this time because I have one extortion on the board. There we go. All right, next is the duchy. Come on, get a mouse, kill some birds. No, they got a rabbit. Not sure if that's good or bad for me. They're building some tea, which gets them their second victory point. They recruit a friggin' million <laughs> moles. And then they're going to dig. If they don't have a tunnel, they take one from the place with the fewest mole soldiers. Or since it's still tied right now, the highest priority. All right, and this time they're trying to find a place they can build. So they're going to the rabbit clearing with the most empty building spots, which is actually all the way up here next to the birds. That's potentially good because that's one place the birds might have gone next. So all those soldiers will probably slow them down. Now they're battling all the bunny clearings where they have pieces. They attack the person with the most buildings and the most pieces there. Um, in this case... We're totally tied, so they go for the first person in turn order, which is me, sadly. And yes, I'm dead, but one of them is dead too. Okay, then they're gonna attack up here, clearly against the uh, river folk. So they only got a one, but they get plus one because of their tunnel, so they defeat two of them. And they're gonna build a market here because they still have uh, not very many soldiers in their supply. Then they're gonna recruit in the building space with the fewest people, and they won't take the dig action because they don't have three or more people on the burrow. So the one extra guy is going here. All right, and then no rallying, no pulling troops off at all. Every place has more than two, but not more than four. So they're going to score two victory points and then sway this banker who will let them build a second time every turn. All right, so they're only at four, but they're definitely accelerating. The one I'm really worried about is the birds. Nobody's really stopped them yet, but maybe the river folk will. All right, so they're restocking. Uh, they can build a coin. That was the first one they revealed. Gets them to six victory points, and they'll have a mouse for their suit. All right, they're going to build a mouse trading post, and nobody's in their payment thing. So they're just going to simply go to the highest mouse clearing. Wow, that's a busy place. Then they recruit one in each mouse clearing. Okay, now for the first time, they do have organize. Because their payments have no warriors, they're going to do all the shield effects. So first it says, score one victory point and place two warriors in a clearing that has river folk pieces and the most enemy pieces. Gets them up to seven. And yeah, no contest that they're going there. Okay, then battle. They battle in every clearing, every single clearing that has river folk. Yikes. All right, so the first tiebreaker is who has the fewest people in payments, but nobody does. So then it's just turn order. So they're going to attack the Irie. I'm okay with that. Uh, they got three. So they do not destroy the roost, but it's undefended. Next in priority is down here. That doesn't look too good for them. Hey, they actually killed one. 
and did not get hurt in return. Okay, up here, uh, I go before the moles, so they're attacking me. And yes, although I killed them too, haha. -ha. Next is here, please don't roll well. Okay, one on one. That's totally fine. Then up here, they're attacking the Iri. Uh, they got defeated, but they got rid of one of their soldiers. And here, also attacking the Iri. I'm totally fine with this. So they got rid of two of them, even though they rolled a three, they only have two soldiers there. All right, so finally somebody's attacking the birds. All right, they score nothing because nobody's in payments, but they trigger racketeering. From each clearing, they take all but two warriors and place them in payments. A couple of clearings had three people. And then they discard two cards from the market whenever they trigger the shields. We really don't know what they're going to do uh, next turn, suit-wise. All right, we come back to the Irie, who are dominating, and uh, there are no coins left to build. And they are ahead of the river folks, so they could have paid them to build that crossbow, but the crossbow is already built. So they're just going to resolve two foxes, one rabbit, three birds. Two foxes. And definitely three birds. Okay, they're moving from the fox clearing. This is the only one that doesn't have a roost. From the rabbit clearing. Wow, this place is just empty? What the heck? And yeah, actually, that's uh, where this one guy for the bird move is going to go as well. Okay, the only rabbit combat is right here. And we kill each other. And then for their no roost combat, they're actually going to attack the river folk here. All right. And sadly, they have two options unopposed to build a roost. They'll go here. And they're just about to the halfway mark for winning. We need to dock them down. All right, now we go to my turn. Um, everything I need to craft, it's two foxes or rabbits, and all I have is one fox and some mouse clearings. But I can flip, so I'm gonna flip this one. And that gives me two face-up plots, which is two victory points. Sorry, I forgot they have to be face-up. And then that's three, so that's five victory points. So hey, I'm tied with the river folk. And let's see, with two of my plots on mouse things, I'm going to discard the bird card and choose mouse for my recruitment. Let's see, for my three actions, I can't put a plot there. I could put one here, and again, it's pretty likely the birds won't attack it. So sure, let's put another of my extortions there. For my second and third action, maybe I go down here where nobody is? Although I don't necessarily want to abandon that. Well, it'll be okay. And I could choose not to draw cards to get another plot down with both those warriors. There's a decent chance nobody would go there. Yeah, you know what, what the heck? Gonna put down one of these uh, bear traps. For the Atoma, while that's face up, if an Atoma tries to put troops in there or move people out of there, then it goes away, but then the action is canceled, is how I understand it. It's a little bit weird, but I'm just hoping it survives. That means I don't draw any cards, uh, so I just have these two rabbit ones for next turn. All right, Dutch, I'm hoping they don't get a fox or a bird, because I think then they'll kill me. Oh, nope, they got a bird. Uh, no crafting. Oh, they only have three guys, so they recruit everybody they can. Then they're going to dig. And there's the aggressive ones. They're going where there's the most enemy buildings and tokens. Well, hey, at least I think they're going to have a huge war with the birds this turn. Yep, now they are battling everywhere. So here they just kill it for free and get a victory point. Here they attack the birds and they get plus one hit. Why don't you just roll a three and kill that roost? Nope. So they kill every soldier there and they lose two themselves. Over here, they're attacking the one river guy. Another free victory point blown up this trade post. And then over here, again, they're attacking the birds. Hopefully they can take out a roost or something. Or, wow, they do still get plus one hit from their tunnel, though, so that's one guy. All right, and the tiebreaker is for them to build in number five again. Now going to their dudes, the marshal lets them place a warrior. He's going to defend the citadel here. They can't take another dig action. They only have one guy there. They can build, but here's the thing. It says if they have a nine or more warriors in their supply, they can build a citadel. They don't. And they already built all their markets, so they just get one victory point for not being able to build. Just to show, they're tied up with everybody. And then for once, they actually do use their little rally to move some people away to these buildings and then take them off to the tunnel. And then all their markets are on the map. That's not good, so they get three victory points. And they sway the mayor. By the way, the way to destroy these is to blow up their buildings. We should probably do that. And that's going to give them more victory points, and these are all going to give them more as well. Yeesh. I feel like me and the river folk are being left behind. Uh, yes, they can build the T they just revealed. So their order is bird. And once again, they have their own people in the payments. They want to go to a clearing where they are. So highest priority is going to be right here. That's actually their second mouse. So they get another victory point for building that. Okay, then they're recruiting along the river again. And they barely don't qualify for any of their battles because they have people in each place. They're going to get two victory points for those guys, though. And this bird card goes away. See, everyone's sort of staying in line with each other except me. Although, uh, so far, nobody's destroyed my tokens. So if I survive a few more seconds... I might get a lot of victory points. All depends on what the dang Irie does. Oh, they're doing birds. They're attacking everywhere, and they're building a sword. Darn. There we go. Now they're at that halfway mark. So for their recruitment, they kind of short up the middle, and they didn't move a ton, but they did get more people here. Now they're going to battle everywhere. And then battling. Here's their one rabbit battle. Oh, nobody. And then their bird battle with plus one attack. So they... Wow, they actually wipe out everybody. <laughs> but the trading post is still there. 
But sadly, they still are able to build a roost over here because nobody even opposed them. They're jumping to 20 victory points. All right, going to my turn. I still can't craft anything, but I can flip. So this would be my third flip. So that's three victory points. And this would be my fourth face up. And when you flip up extortion, you're supposed to steal a card from the hand of each uh, other player there. But for the Atoma, you just take cards from the deck. So I actually get one card for each of them. Uh, three, bring my hand to five. And hey, that was seven victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not bad. And let's see. I could craft the sword. Yeah, so I think I'm going to get rid of uh, Bird and Say Mouse to hang on to this sword card. All right, for my first action, because it's free and I can do it, I'm going to blow up this roost that they left undefended. Gets me one victory point. For my second action, I think I'll plot over here. Let's put extortion down again. Ooh, for my third action, I just noticed this. Let's blow this up and get a free victory point. And then I don't really need to draw cards, so let's do something else. You know, I don't want the river folk attacking me. I'm actually going to spend three warriors, give them to them, to make them happy, and I'll use them to attack here. Go! Oh, or nothing. <laughs> but at least I still made them my friends. All right, so if this survives to next turn, I could get like four or five victory points from that. The birds need to slow down, though. Speaking of slowing down, the duchy is going to go crazy. But hopefully it'll be on the birds. They got a bird card. If they're not crafting anything, they recruit everybody again. And they are going to dig. Oh, no, no, they're coming back here. The plot and trading posts were too much for them to ignore. Oh, and man, because we have equal pieces, they're going to attack me there. No, don't roll a two or a three. Darn it. So I killed two of them, but with their plus one from the tunnel, they kill my plot. Although this is the one that when it's destroyed, lets me immediately place a warrior in each adjacent clearing. So that part's kind of cool, at least. Right down here, they try to kill the river folk. Yes. Over here, I lose the tiebreaker. There's a guy who just spawned from that little raid. And then here, they're attacking the birds. Yay. Oh, and they killed four of them. So they leave their uh, roost undefended. Maybe I can kill it again. Ha ha ha. Then for their build, once again, they don't have any markets to place, but they don't have enough troops available to want to build a citadel, so they just go up one. Let's see. Ministers. They place a warrior. They take the build action, that's another victory point. And then they remove a warrior so they can get two victory points. See, yeah, they're right up in there now too. Yeah, we should probably blow up one of their buildings soon because now they're about to get, oh, one per citadel on the map. That's not really a big deal at all. All right, river folk, uh, nothing to build, but it will be a mouse order. Let's get some a victory point from the trading post. Oh, and they wanna be where I am. Maybe I don't love that, <laughs> so they're gonna pop in there. And they recruit a bunch more. And this turn at least, because I paid them, they are happy. So they're just gonna get three victory points, discard a card and they're done. So except for the Irie being way ahead, we are all in a pretty even space. Speaking of Irie, they add a rabbit. And they're going to recruit eight people, geez. Once again, a lot of central recruitment, although it looks like they're poised to go and take that clearing back. Yep, they're bringing two, although actually it'd be pretty tough for them to win there. Ooh, and they don't get to move anywhere else because their numbers are too high. So good, they finally might not build a roost. Okay, so for their first battle, they're just going to execute me over here. Bye. Their second battle, they're going to kill me here. Yay. Oh, and I even hurt them back, darn it. Then here's the most important one. They're going to attack here. Now, if they can kill at least one of the river folk without taking any damage in return, they will rule here and they can build another roost. So we're really hoping that both dice show at least a one. Beautiful. So they do three damage and take these guys almost completely out, but they are wiped out, which means they're definitely not building a roost here. So they're finally going into turmoil. They'll lose one victory point per bird card. They've got four, so that's minus four. And then every card goes away except for their two starting bird cards. Now, they still score four victory points like normal, so they actually stay where they are, but that's huge. Now their turn's going to be way weaker next time with them having fewer cards. All right, now we come around to me, and darn it, I had two fox ones, but they killed one of them, so I can't craft the sword. So I guess I'll craft this false order. It's in Birdsong. You may discard this card to move half of an enemy's warriors rounded up from any clearing, treating yourself as that player and ignoring rule. That seems like it could be useful, so I'll craft that. Then I'll flip my one new plot. So I'm going to get a card as though I'm extorting from the, uh, <laughs> the otters there. That's my fourth face up, so I go to 20. So, man, if I can, like, kill a token this turn and then get a couple more things down, I could win, but that seems unlikely. All right, for my recruitment this turn, I'm going to uh, use a fox one because that'll protect here. More importantly, it will give me a guy in there. And then these places maybe aren't as good, but uh, at least the birds are kind of protecting me. All right, now for my actions. <sighs> I think maybe I move this guy over to protect it, then move a guy to place a plot there. We'll do my uh, raid. Gives me one action left, two if I don't draw. Oh, actually, you know, maybe I don't have to protect that. I'll go one, two, and kill that undefended trading post. 
Gets me to 21. If my uh, plot survives, I have a decent chance to put another one next turn and then win the following turn if, <laughs> if we last that long. All right, but no cards for me, so we're going to the moles. Uh, they're doing a mouse turn. But they're in last place. I'm not too worried about them. They are recruiting a ton, though. Yeah, it's four. And they're going to dig. Oh, and they're going to pop right in here. Hello. And they're going to continue their fun tradition of killing me wherever they go. Hey, over here, too. Haha, <laughs> take that. Oh, wait, that is definitely not a mouse clearing. I should not have attacked there. This, on the other hand, is one. Kill some birds. Uh, so they get the three, but they can only hit two times. But they have the tunnel, so they do three total, but they lose both there, guys. Hey, if the big boys keep on fighting, that should help us win. Oh, down here, too. Yeah, kill those otters. Oh, they destroyed them. And they get a victory point. Yeah, but leave me alone. We are friends. Once again, they're not building. They're getting a bunch of bonus victory points for not being able to build again, for taking a soldier off. Oh, crud, where were they? I think they were on 15 for having uh, one citadel on the map. So they are definitely bursting ahead. Oh, gosh, they're going to rally and score. All right, so this is an ordered clearing with two people, so they'll go over there. And then one of them is going to come back to the tunnel. Yeah, they get three victory points for their markets. And oh, no, they're swaying another person. Oh my gosh, they're going to score double for their markets? Okay, we need to kill a market this coming turn, I think, or we're done. Maybe the Riverfolk can do it for us. They're restocking, no building. Oh, but they're doing a bird to turn. And nobody is here, which means they're just going right to clearing one. Okay, and they recruited. Oh, they have nobody in payments. They're going to get a victory point. They're going to place two more guys, and then they're going to battle in every place. Wow. Oh, and this is good. It's not going to be enough by itself, but they are going to put their two extra guys there and attack there. Well, in some places like here, they're going to choose to attack me because that's just how their AI works. Nothing there. Okay, but down here, they're going to try to hurt the molds. What the heck? Um, over here. Come on. No, really? That's all they got? Although I can hire them on my turn and have them attack again, but that still won't get to their buildings. Okay, down here, they're attacking me again. Okay, they only killed my soldier, though. Ooh, but this one is more of a problem. Okay, wow. They only killed my guy again. Down here, the Irie. Yeah, I don't mind if they get hurt. Okay. And last one, attacking the Irie, probably, nope, they did not kill a roost, wow. Then they pulled their troops off of here, so I don't know if this is good. I gotta stop the mole somehow. Although maybe our neutered Irie can do it. Uh, oh, okay, they got a bird. That means they're only acting in one place for their recruitment, their movement, and their battle. All right, they're recruiting here, because it's most enemy pieces. They're moving from here to here, not that it's gonna do much. And that's actually the only place with no roost they can battle. Although if they defeat one guy, they'll be able to build there. And yeah, they actually uh, did not get hurt, so boom. Oh, that's right, plus one hit, so doom, boom. Uh, which means they do get a roost, which means they don't go into turmoil, and they get five victory points. Gives them a 25. Ah, darn it. They're about to win if they don't go into turmoil. Although I think their chances of building a roost next turn are very low. All right, awesome. I can craft a sword. It's the only one left. I do have two fox clearings, so I get two victory points. That brings me to 23. Ooh, and I just had a good idea. I'm going to use this false orders thing to move two of these warriors over here. And now I have a chance of maybe blowing up one of those buildings. And beauty, nobody destroyed this, so I flip that. That's my fifth. Oh my gosh, if I can kill two things this turn, I win. Ooh, let's see, if I pay the otters, I can kill that tunnel. Well, before I figure all that out, let's go and recruit some rabbits. Oh yeah, I think with that, we totally got this. Okay, so I'm gonna pay the river folk. Four warriors to be able to use them this turn. And then if I don't draw cards, I have four actions. Okay, so let's attack here for my first one. Ah, jeez, all right, so I kill one guy. Let's attack here for my second one. That's right, you can attack more than once. So I rolled a zero, but with it being undefended, I still kill one thing. That's one victory point. And let's attack here for my third one. There we go. <laughs> okay, so that gets me enough victory points to win. And also because I killed a building, they lose their lowermost uh, crown, which would have slowed them down a bit too. But yeah, there we go. The Irie definitely uh, might have won next turn if they could build a roost. Uh, I think the Duchy probably would not have won next turn. The river folk were way behind, although they were about to get four victory points from my uh, warriors being in there, plus some more. But that was Root with three Atoma, two of them being the new ones from the uh, Clockwork expansion number two. Hope you enjoyed it. I had fun playing it. Uh, good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.